Welcome to this very special episode of Life in the Prairie. In this episode, we'll be taking a more specific view on Eden Prairie, the environment. In this next half an hour, I'll be taking you to different locations throughout the city and introducing you to some very special people who care about the environment. Also throughout the show, we'll be giving you some up-to-date information about different kinds of transportation in Eden Prairie that are safe for the environment. But first, as you can see, Eden Prairie is surrounded by water. With the Minnesota River flowing alongside the city border, along with 15 lakes and over 500 wetlands, it might seem like Eden Prairie will never have a water drought. But in the next few minutes, I'll show you how water conservation is important in Eden Prairie. We'll go to the water plant and see how water like this comes out of our faucets, and we'll learn the trick to making sure we never run out. It's something people might take for granted. Being able to flush the toilet, run the dishwasher, or even grab a glass of water. It may seem simple. Turn on the faucet and water magically appears. But what may seem effortless is actually quite complex. Our goal is to provide safe drinking water for the public 24-7, 365 days a year. So Dave Brazel works the for demand. the city of Eden Prairie and gives tours at the water okay, plant. This the we're producing, the On this tour, Brazel explains where Eden Prairie where gets water its water. Comes from. It comes from deep down in the ground from an aquifer. So we pull the water up from deep down in the ground about 400 feet below the surface. Once the water is pulled from the aquifer, it is pumped into one of 14 wells in Eden Prairie. Each well pumps two million gallons of water per day. Once in the well, the water goes into a basin okay, for this treatment. This is the basin room, and this is where, in the middle here, is where the well water gets pumped in from the big 30-inch collector line. So the water has to come in contact with the line. The minerals need to be precipitated out and then from there it goes into the filter. So it takes about four hours for the water to travel through the entire treatment process. Once the water goes through a chemical treatment in the basin, it is put into a sludge press. The sludge press pretty much does what it sounds like. It makes sludge like this. During this process, most of the actual water gets taken out and minerals and lime are left over. Next, the water that gets taken out goes through a filtration process. They do exactly what they sound like they do, they filter the water. So any carryovers from the basins are going to get trapped in the filters. During this process, the water needs to filter through 8 inches of rock, 20 inches of sand, and then another layer of gravel and rock. And then a bunch of different types of gravel and rock. Brazel says the most important part of the treatment process is testing the water quality. It takes four hours for the water to get through the water plant, so we're going to check the water quality. So what we want to do is provide safe water for the public. After and it gets tested, the water is put into an underground storage tank and then gets pumped into water towers. Brazel said the city tries to keep the water towers as full as possible. In order to achieve that goal, the city has implemented a water restriction policy. That means that if you have an odd-numbered house, you can water on an odd-numbered day. So let's say your house number ends in a one. That means you can water on the first, the third, the fifth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then the even is just the opposite. Stovering says no most Eden Prairie residents respect the ordinance. Judy Schaefer is an Eden Prairie resident who tries to conserve water. Well, the only problem is, is when there's an extra day in the month, we have to make sure we get it back on the odd. Otherwise, it just, it's automatic. It'll just come on every other day. In but order to conserve water, Schaefer and her family bought an energy-efficient dishwasher and toilet. Because it used less water. And it is a very good dishwasher also. The but, city um, offered Schaefer a $100 rebate for buying the dishwasher. Yes, we do have a number of water conservation initiatives. We have an appliance rebate program for water conserving appliances. So if you're replacing older toilets, you get a rebate. Or if you're purchasing a new dishwasher or washing machine that's water efficient, you can get a rebate. Stover says the city tries to encourage people to conserve water How often do you like have Schaefer. Water this one? Well, you know, I the state is concerned that as people are withdrawing a lot of water for lawn watering, that we are withdrawing it faster than it can recharge. And at some point, it's going to go negative.
Getting around can be stressful, whether it's going to work downtown or just running errands here in Eden Prairie. But taking the bus can cut down on your daily stress and it can cut down on air pollution. Eden Prairie residents can hop on Southwest Metro Transit at several different locations throughout the city or they can park and ride right here at the transit station. This spring, the Federal Highway Administration awarded Southwest Metro Transit with the 2005 Environmental Award for Excellence. Southwest Metro Transit got the award for eliminating over 1,600 vehicle trips per day and therefore reducing carbon monoxide emissions. For more information on Southwest Metro Transit, visit swtransit.org. Using mass transportation can help cut down on carbon monoxide emissions and help Eden Prairie strive to be pollution free. But the Southwest Metro Transit isn't the only one attempting to be environmentally friendly. The new Eden Prairie Library has just installed some energy efficient infrastructure. Let's go check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, Eden Prairie Library. When the Eden Prairie Library opened its doors more than a year ago, there was a buzz over its state-of-the-art facilities, and one innovation is still buzzing. Well, let's take a look. What you're about to look at is the first public one in the state. This is the converter. It's a fuel cell. And the hydrogen goes through an electrochemical reaction. And Hold on a minute. What's he talking about? Fuel cells convert hydrogen and oxygen into water and in that process produce electricity. It's basically just another way to produce electricity, but it's better for the environment. Well, this, this is uh, basically pollution free and at the end of this year, we will be reporting to the state of Minnesota um, how much electricity was produced by this uh, fuel cell and uh, how much uh, emissions were not produced by burning the natural gas in this compared to what would be from a normal power plant. Okay, but why is this in the library? Uh, the great thing about being at the library is that other public institutions, industry, uh, school groups, uh, private citizens can come and see this, uh, see the display. It's, it's just a great uh, showcase to uh, display uh, upcoming technology. Librarians are energized over this new energy system as well. Right. I think a lot of uh, librarians were like myself, they were very excited. I think, you know, again, it's something people hear about, but they don't know very much about it. Uh, I think that's good. I think it's, you know, that shows that some people are thinking ahead, you know, not just what's happening next week or next whatever. They're thinking 10, 15 years ahead. I think that's great. With some predicting that there'll be a 3,000 megawatt electrical shortage in the state over the next decade, Fuel cells may be in great need, but if you're looking to get one installed in your home, but don't hold your you, breath. As a homeowner, probably can't afford this for your home yet. It's not, there are not that many of them out there. It'll Fuel have cells get, haven't taken over the market quite yet. This just kind of gives an, a snapshot of uh, the different sources of electricity uh, coming into the state. So you can see about 75% of it is from coal, nuclear, 17% hydro, 3% uh, natural gas, 1%. So the majority of ours is coal. And uh, someday, uh, as more fuel cells uh, become available, then we should see a slice for fuel cells. For EPTV, I'm Pat Brink. Coming up after the break, he lived his life with one goal, to preserve Eden Prairie's beauty. We'll show you how residents are enjoying that today. Of the technology and we created. One Eden Generate Prairie company is making here. waves we all the way in California. You're all set to go. That's it? That's it. That was easy.
Did you know, according to the Environmental Protection Agency, three quarters of all trips made to and from work are single passenger vehicles. To help turn that trend around, some companies right here in Eden Prairie offer benefits to encourage workers to walk, bike or carpool to work. One Eden Prairie company has caught on to this idea of commuter benefits. Starkey Laboratories gives $25 to employees who carpool at least three times per week. Carpoolers are also entered into a monthly prize oh, drawing. The carpool program just created such a hype here at Starkey. Uh, a lot of people that are very interested in, you know, slimming down pollution, things like that, feel Starkey is a great company for doing this. And Switching from driving alone to using commuter benefits can save a commuter up to $1,000 per year in driving costs. Plus, a company that offers commuter benefits can save money through parking costs and tax reductions. According to the EPA, slashing the number of cars on the road can slash the amount of global warming emissions in the atmosphere. While some businesses offer commuter benefits, others are working to develop environmentally efficient products. Independent Natural Resources, located right here in Eden Prairie, is making a splash by being the first to develop a system that generates electricity using ocean waves. It's called Green Power, and reporter Heidi Sire has a story. You'll see the lights come on. In Eden Prairie, Minnesota, probably the most impressive part. One company, everybody goes ooh ah when the lights come on. Made up of two people. Once you've got the water moving, now you can use it for all kinds of options. Isn't afraid of getting its feet wet. No one's ever done something like this before, so there's so many questions you have to overcome. The company, Independent Natural Resources Incorporative, its mission, finding a way to generate electricity using ocean waves. Right now we're finding it's, it's a a frontier. It's brand new, it's exciting, there's a lot of folks trying to get into the market. In order to do that, Mark Thomas and Doug Sandberg had to get to work. Well, okay, with two guys who didn't start out as energy experts, they had to get to a lot of work. And I'd never looked at energy and I wasn't an energy guide. After a lot of research, test trials, and using what they knew would withstand the test of time, Independent Natural Resources is working to perfect its own technology, technology that's taking ocean waves and transforming it into electricity. They're calling this the Sea Dog Pump System. This is the Sea Dog 1, as we call it, the first version of the technology we created. In order to generate our own activity here, we had to have ocean waves. From Underneath Minnesota to Northern California, the company hopes to give the Sea Dog its sea legs by the end of 2005. Now we've got their support in the Northern California area where we're doing the sea trial. With that short-term goal in mind, Independent Natural Resources hopes to achieve its long-term goal of upping the use of renewable energy. Ocean energy wave activity is the best fuel source for renewable energy device systems. For EPTV, that's the good news. I'm Heidi Sire. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, hybrid electric vehicles can improve the fuel economy and emit less global warming and smog-forming emissions than most conventional vehicles. How do they work? Hybrids convert normally wasted energy during coasting and braking into electricity which is stored in a battery until needed. That electricity is used to assist the engine when accelerating or hill climbing. Also, some hybrids automatically shut off the engine when the vehicle comes to a stop and restart when the accelerator is pressed. Former Eden Prairie kind of City Council member Jan Mossman loves to show off her Saturn hybrid. This is like the best combination of every car because it's kind of cool because it's really uh, fashionable and, and it's the latest technology. And, but it, it's tough. It can take a beating. It does well on the, in the snow and ice. Um, it's smart because it gets great mileage. Um, Toyota has a really good package. And then with the gas mileage, I can still come to my favorite gas stations and get really good quality gas at the mobile and at the, at the BP and, and not spend very much money. I've got money left over. That's nice. Jan Mossman loves her hybrid because it doesn't pollute as much as other cars. But she's not the only former city council member who cared about the environment. Eleven years ago, a man named Richard T. Anderson fought to preserve Eden Prairie's natural beauty. 
In this next story, we'll show you how Eden Prairie residents appreciate his work. In the bustling city of Eden Prairie, where business booms and people flourish, there is a place that illustrates another way of life. And it was really peaceful. And Meet quiet. the Urbanskis. Yeah, even though you can hear the cars out here on the highway, once you get in the cons conservation area, you can't hear them at all. It's great. It's like the place they're talking about is the Richard T. Anderson Conservation Area, located in Eden Prairie. Tonight. Uh, to have something close by like this makes um, nature and kind of rural settings doable for us. The preservation, which is located in the southwest corner of Eden Prairie, was bought by the city in 1994. And it was named after a city council member who died that same year. Well, this is a picture of Dick when he did not have a beard. And I think every This is Sonia Anderson, wife beard. of the late council it member Richard T. Anderson. People hundred years from now are going to say, who is Richard T. Anderson? They're probably going to say it this year and five years from now. And uh, Sonia Anderson's late husband is remembered for his work to preserve the city's natural beauty. He was very proud of, of his commitment, and I know that this would be a very different city if Dick hadn't come and had had the vision and and of course Richard Anderson believed everyone in Eden Prairie should have the opportunity to see nature the way he did. He wanted the lakes to be for all of the people and to as much as possible get people to go around it and Dick also was a real biker and hiker and so he just insisted we have trails so people could walk through the city or they could bike through the city. In um, honor of his work the city sidewalk. dedicated a piece of land to Richard Anderson a piece of land he fought to preserve so the people of Eden Prairie could enjoy it. And Sonia Anderson knows the value of it. And the Richard T. Anderson Conservation Area has something of everything. I mean, there's streams, there's the prairie up on the top, there are big ravines, there are woods all over. If you stand at the top of the stairs, it's it just smashing. In the but if anyone knows this area and what it can offer, it's Stan Tequila. These things, these plants here, these, these are prairie plants and they're woody stemmed. They're called lead plant and they could easily be 500 or 1,000 years old. Ella is a uh, naturalist and gives nature walks a couple times a year at the Richard T. Anderson Preserve. Take a group out here um, in the spring and then again in the fall and then I take several side trips here also with um, the emphasis on seeing the birds and seeing the animals and um, and, and also one other thing that we're going to go visit next. That other thing Tequila's talking about is a lizard. In this area here, we have things, uh, we have very small lizards called prairie skink. They're, um, I don't think a lot of people even realize we have a lizard in Minnesota, let alone right here in Eden Prairie. While Tequila looks for lizards, the Urbanskis look for berries. Ooh, yeah, those are raspberries. And Sonia Anderson says the former Eden Prairie council member would be pleased. That I think he really deserved and probably would have been the one that meant the most to him. Sonia and Anderson has a lot of pictures of her husband, but one is her favorite. This is a picture of Dick. This picture was taken the day he died. There he is, what he loved the most, you know, being out in nature and the stream and the trees and freedom and, you know, just enjoying it. And so, so lies a man who fought hard to preserve a natural wonder. Going this way. A natural wonder for all to enjoy. You don't see any here, For right? APTV, I'm Kim Johnson. Still to come, Dutch Elm takes its toll in Eden Prairie. Tips on how to keep your trees safe. And snakes and salamanders. <laughs> How He's one city employee makes a living. Isn't that kind of awesome? Hey there. Hi, 
officer. Hi, I'm Officer Halverson, Union Prairie Police. How are you doing? Good, thanks, and you? I'm just fine, thank you. Good. See, the reason I stopped by is I noticed your garage door was open. Did you know your garage door was open? No, I didn't. I'm just trying to make residents more aware that having an open garage door is a crime of opportunity for criminals. If you're not in your garage, close your garage door, please, okay? Well, thank you for the reminder. You're very welcome. That. Thank you so much. Did you know that according to the Department of Transportation, 9% of adult workers bike or walk to work? There are countless benefits of walking, biking, or rollerblading to get from here to there. Not only are there health and economic benefits, but less motor vehicles on the road is better for the environment because it reduces the amount of emissions being released into the atmosphere. In the U.S., 60% of all automobile trips are under 5 miles in length. So, choosing to walk or bike when making these shorter trips can significantly reduce air pollution. The city of Eden Prairie has more than 100 miles of sidewalks with trails and more than 20 miles in the making for your walking and biking pleasure. Happy trails! Walking is great because you get to be outdoors, and if anyone spends time outdoors, it's Dan Tequila. The city of Eden Prairie is proud to have Tequila on their staff. This award-winning author, columnist, and photographer has a special appreciation for the Earth's natural beauty. Reporter Ben Jurez has his story. Who wants to see a snake? It's Dan Tequila. This is a dream it's, job. It's something that I've always thought about and always wanted to do. And Tequila is the coordinator of nature camps and classes at the Starring Lake Outdoor Center. He can also be called a naturalist. A naturalist is really somebody who can understand the technical, scientific, natural world and translate it or interpret it for somebody who doesn't and be able to get something, what I call the gee whiz stuff, over to them so that they can maybe be hooked on some kind of um, uh, an idea or a concept that may draw them into learning more about the environment or nature or something like that. Because somebody who's um, educated about nature makes better choices about nature. Educated about nature, he is. foot long bull snake. Tequila has written over 70 books has his own newspaper column, and he's traveled the continent to photograph hundreds of plants and animal species. I've gone from, you know, Key West, Florida, in the southeast, to Nome, Alaska, on the Bering Sea, and I've gone from Maine to California to the Baja, and everything, just about everywhere in between, it seems like, so. And everywhere in between is where he develops quite the passion for plants. Just about everything we do has something to do with plants. Um, the air we breathe. Let's start with some real basics. The air we breathe comes from, guess where? Our plants. Take away the plants, no people. Um, it all goes back to the green plants in this earth. Without the green plants, there's no life. So you guys are interested in some reptiles and some amphibians? From a young age, tequila has had an appetite for the outdoors. A little more tricky than when that. I was a little kid, I always dreamed about being a naturalist and writing books about nature. And never thought it could come true, because who did that? Nobody. The kids at the outdoor center soak up Tequila's knowledge of nature, and one is especially impressed. Mm -hmm. I think it's really cool. <laughs> Tequila's daughter Abby has followed her father's fondness for nature. I just like animals, so I think it's cool. And what's cool about his job, Tequila says, is to get young people glued on the cool. environment. That's bad. The kids who are here during camp and learning about nature are going to be someday people who make the rules, who are going to be anything from a city councilman all the way up to whoever, you know, President of the United States. And, and those people, if they have a good, firm understanding of the environment, are going to make better choices in the long run. For EPTV, I'm Ben Juris. Did you know that from the year 1980 to the year 2000, the number of vehicles on the road increased almost twice as fast as the population growth? And did you know that according to the Department of Transportation, the average household spends 18% of its income in driving costs? That's more than it spends on food. But there is a way to cut those costs, carpooling. The Twin Cities has its share of high occupancy vehicle or HOV lanes for carpoolers to take advantage of. HOV lanes were first implemented in 1969 in Northern Virginia and have taken off since then. 
Now there are approximately 340 miles of HOV lanes throughout the U.S. to encourage citizens to share a ride with others. Carpooling can reduce the amount of vehicles on the road and therefore reduce the amount of harmful emissions in the atmosphere. But trees can also reduce the amount of harmful emissions in the atmosphere by storing carbon dioxide in the soil that surrounds them. Trees can be a main cleansing factor in our atmosphere, but one tree disease is wiping out trees all across the state of Minnesota, including Eden Prairie. Reporter Heidi Sire explains. Measure the diameter on them first. Jeff Cordes is a certified tree inspector for the city of Eden Prairie. We get the diameter measurement because if somebody has to contract out to have it cut down, they want to know how big the trees are before they can give them an estimate. Of how Lately, much Cordes cost. has had his work cut out for him, literally. For Eden Prairie, we've, in the past uh, few years, we've been taking about 600 to 1,000 trees out every year. Trees all over the city have had to be cut down, and Dutch elm disease is to blame. Well, you'll start seeing the signs of, of the wilting in the leaves, which is an indication of Dutch elm disease disease elm trees. Residents don't have to worry about being the sole spotters of infected trees. The city keeps an eye out too. Typically we'll go out first or second week of June and we normally uh, canvas the residential areas first and mark those trees. We'll mark them with a with orange paint with a, a, a number and a ring around the tree and then typically an H on it for high risk. Cordes says residents can contact the Parks and Recreation Division for more assistance. They provide a lot of shade and and you know a lot of the a lot of the wildlife use them for both food and nesting and that kind of thing, and you know you, it's it's just something that we want to try to preserve as many of them as possible. In the meantime, the city will continue to try to be one step ahead of a disease that moves quickly. For EPTV, I'm Heidi Sire. Well, that's all the time we have left. Thanks for watching this edition of Life in the Prairie. We hope you learned something new about the environment in Eden Prairie. Now it's time for you to do your part in preserving our natural resources. Thanks for watching.